Hey guys, we're at the Mountain Games in Vail, Colorado. It's actually my first year here and there's all kinds of cool tents and different displays. And I saw this bowhead tent and these bikes, this thing is incredible. And I just wanted to learn more about it. So what was your name? Devin Sullivan. Devin Sullivan, man. Tell me about this company. Yeah, when did you guys start? Uh, we're pretty excited. We started uh, unofficially a couple decades ago with the founder getting injured. Oh. And so he was a competitive snowboarder had a spinal cord injury and just wanted to get back out there. Man, so. I grew up snowboarding too. Cool. It's a great sport, but I, I mountain bike and okay. I can totally understand where you'd want to like get back out there. Exactly. Yep. And so this, I, isn't this like an adaptive trike? Is that what that's called? Yes. Yeah. We try to get as close to the mountain bike experience as you can. And so the idea came about with uh, Nordic skiing actually, somewhat of a sit ski. And so we're somewhat unique in that sense where we have a pin it's for safety as you get into the bike. Huh. The pin comes out, and at that point, the whole bike can lean. Oh my gosh, so that you, is incredible. You can have a lot of that carb sensation, right? I was looking at this like steering linkage system up front, and I thought, oh, that must be for suspension, but it's like for leaning. Yeah, yep, you get all the benefits you would on your bike, and we try to make it narrow so it's not too unwieldy to do all that. Wow. So you can turn and articulate, we say. And yeah, it makes it pretty capable, nice and narrow, so you can still ride single track and all that. Right on, yeah. right on. I, a lot of times I'm covering bikes, like, you know, trikes where it's, um, this, is, this is a tadpole, right? Where you, yes. okay, and yep. the other one, it's like a delta trike, I think, where there's two wheels in the back. Yeah, sometimes a prone position, so you're on your chest and you're pedaling. Yeah, yep. yeah, and sometimes they are too wide to get through a door, so it's it's nice that you did that, and probably through trees and stuff in the backcountry. Yep, and the number wasn't arbitrary, if you measure, here to here, we're the same width as a downhill mountain bike. At Whoa. The well, hey, yeah. hey, there you go. Cause yeah, they do have those bigger bars yep. to kind of like give you control. Yep. So I'm noticing, uh, I mean, this thing is so custom and I'm looking at these front wheels. These look like 20 inch, is that right? Correct. Yep. And then back here, what is this like a 27.5? Uh, we give you the option. So on this bike, we got 26, 26 on this one. plus, right? Okay, plus then, size. Yep, and because of the outer diameter consistency, you could run a 27 just with a regular tire, right? Uh huh. You could even try to get a fat tire in with 26, wow. and you can go 29 with a road bike. Oh my god! So you can kind of use it like a gravel bike. Yeah. Yep. Dude, that is that is really cool. I'm a big fan of plus size tires uh, because it adds some comfort and stability. Of course, this is a trike, so you've yep. got stability. But what I was looking for is like, well, where's, this is an electric bike, right? There's like batteries right here. Is this the power right. tube? Yeah, so we've given the riders quite a bit of watt hours, probably a term you guys are familiar with, uh -huh. how far you can get on it. Yeah. Uh, we have a double setup of 500s. So wow. you've got a total of a thousand. A kilowatt hour. Yeah. That is awesome. Yeah, we want people to get out into the backcountry and have fun. And I think we're the only guys at this point doing a mid motor. So if you see right here, very much like a motorcycle, yeah. the motor is structurally tied to the subframe. Huh. So that gives a better balance. It gives a roll center that we really wanted so it doesn't tip aggressively. Uh -huh. And it also just puts all the chain lines in one path so we don't have a lot of drag. So back to this plus size tire, you're using a Bosch motor, a yep. mid-drive. What motor do you use? Uh, we are running the new CX. Wow, so e -bike. fourth gen CX performance Correct. line. Correct. That is an awesome motor. It gives yeah. you like 85 Newton meters of torque. Yep. You've got, I, so you're probably familiar with this if you're into e-bikes, but it measures your pedal cadence. It measures your pedal torque and rear wheel speed. So you've got three signals that are being sent to this thing. So when can people get these and how much does something like this cost? Uh, the average starts at 15K US mm -hmm. and it's completely custom. Okay, so well, it depends yeah. on your needs. Um, some of the guys have a little bit more um, aggressive style, so they might want more of a mountain bike. Other folks want a more adaptive ride. Yeah. So it depends on what you're after. Okay, and I'm, I'm seeing on this one, you've got like the hand cranks. Yeah. Okay. This is uh, our first offering here. Our other offering is full powered with a throttle. This one, just like uh, any other pedal bike, you get it going. Mm -hmm. And then the Bosch picks up your, your sensor, like you said, and it amplifies it. Fantastic. So, oh yeah. my gosh. And we do have a drive line that starts here, comes down the steering column, down into here, and it integrates into the frame. Wow. So we're pretty excited there. Um, you know, there's not a lot of drag. So if you're running on, say, the eco mode, 
just like your e-bike. Yeah, you this is the kiosk. Yep. You've got the kit. So it's a color display. It's got the Bosch app. You can charge things off of this. And when you've got a kilowatt hour of power, that's like... You can go away. Tap right into that. You yeah. could use your phone probably up here. Yep. Yeah, it'll go into Bluetooth, anything your e-bike would do. And, and it's like a belt drive. You got a belt drive, yeah, too. Yeah, we're running gates. You got, yeah, so you got gates, you've got this like funky double chain. I mean, this is custom. This is really, really cool. Yeah, we're excited. This I'm is... excited about it too. And I, I missed my point earlier, right? So it's plus size tire and that gives you a bigger contact patch. And because it is, right. you know, you, that's where the power is being sent from the motor and from your pedaling. These front wheels, they've got huge brakes. Can you tell me about this? Yeah, we're running 200s on Magira's here, and it's a four pot, so wow. basically a downhill bike, right? Quad piston calipers, yep. faster, better cooling, and yep. you have you have a rear brake as well, so like all wheel braking. That's a traditional rear brake. The front has a splitter. Okay. So you can just operate single lever on the front. This is so cool. And the reason we do that, you can get up to a pretty quick speed on these, and you know, to shut down a rider plus the weight of the bike, we didn't want to take any chances. That makes sense. Yep. Okay, and so you've got like the body harness thing here, mm -hmm. and I'm guessing this is for someone who has limited mobility with their legs, and Correct. you're using your upper body. How else can this be configured? Like, what, who, who could this be for? Um, some folks have approached us that want kind of like the gravel bike exercise, so they're probably going to put road wheels on. Their hand configuration will be whatever they're used to. Yeah. And it'll be somewhat of like a spin bike workout. Okay. So. Can you also stagger them so it's like yes. left, right, left, right? Yep. Okay. I, I figured, it's right? It's all customizable. Yeah. Pretty adjustable that way. And then it looks like, like in terms of your body length and everything, you can adjust maybe some of this so that the foot rest and stuff. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. I should touch on that is the harness. We work with the kiteboarding company, so this is pretty robust. Oh, cool. And then wow, underneath the seat here, there's four inches of fore and aft adjustability. Oh, okay. So that's how you can play with your reach. That makes sense. Your arms. Wow, oh, these are, this yeah. is cool. And yeah, I should touch on that real quick. We worked pretty hard with Mark Forged. So they are a 3D metal printing company. And this part came out of their printer as you see it. Wow, and so it's lightweight because it's like honeycomb almost. Correct, yep. Dude. And to, you know, to do that manufacturing otherwise would be difficult. This feels like one of those beds that like the purple rubber things where it's like, it's, it's squishy, but it also doesn't feel like it's gonna soak moisture and stuff. Yeah, the tray underneath it is mm -hmm. a standardized size for anyone adaptive who has their own cushion. Okay. So they bring the cushion and whatever you have. That's nice. That's a, And I noticed you've got this really great carbon fiber skid plate or maybe it's fiberglass or something. Yeah, that's gonna be carbon fiber and it kind of molds into the batteries to protect them. Sure. And I'll get down low here and show you. We're still in development here, but there will be a latch. And so the Bosch system is keyed. Mm -hmm. So you put your key in turn the latch and the battery rotates out. Oh, that makes so sense. So if you store it in the garage or wintertime riding, you pop the batteries out, charge them overnight, and you don't have to bring the bike anywhere. Of course, and that's great, because this is bigger, you might like need to leave this in the garage, exactly. but being able to protect your batteries, you want to avoid extreme cold, extreme heat, keep them at least half full if you aren't going to be riding for a while to maximize the lifespan. And because this is it's pretty modular, I mean, it's the Power Pack 500, yep. replacement's not going to be a huge issue. Bosch has a great warranty. International access. International access, yeah, you're totally right. Yep. In, for, in terms of charging, do they have to be charged independently, or do you have some sort of like single plug? They do have a harness system that you can upgrade to. I believe it's like a Y connector. Yeah. So yeah, I've you could it. leave them on and do it that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just kind of cool to see how custom you guys have gone with this thing. And is this this also carbon fiber? Like the it is. Yeah. The surround. Yeah, this is part of the adjustment of the seat system, so you can tailor that to your needs based on your hip size and everything to get really anchored into the bike. As you lean, you kind of do it with your hips, right? Sure. So you want to be tight on there. That is so interesting. Like the whole how it leans. Um, I'm wondering what other accessories you guys have planned because some people are probably gonna want lights and are there any kind of racks or anything like that? Yeah, we're thinking a, a fender on the rear like our other products have mm -hmm. and then possibly like a pannier system where it could anchor onto the swing arm. That makes sense. Yeah. And it, this is a, you do have rear suspension, right? Yeah, right now we're running a rock shocks, inline air shock. There is room for a coil shock as well. So if you want to do more of downhill riding, you can swap out the shock. No cool. problem there. The rear travel is set at four inches, which matches the front. So this also, you've got some suspension up here too? Or? Yeah, give it a push for you. Because with the articulation or whatever, I, I just assumed. We have both actually. So this is just vertical travel. Oh, whoa. Both wheels. 
That is such a big deal. I love to see the brakes. Yeah, everything moves together. So you picture the articulation we looked at mm -hmm. plus that suspension and it can sort of track the ground as you go, right? And that's great, you know, especially for control and stuff. Yeah. And then neck and back sensitivity. I, you know, you kind of get headaches if you don't have some suspension on a rough trail. Yeah, we're trying to make it aggressive bike and then you can cater your needs to maybe gravel or road or whatever it is. Nice, man. Well, it seems really, really cool. You talked about how this is still kind of coming together a little bit when will they be available or can people pre-order right now or what we are taking pre-orders we have a few in the books already uh, we don't anticipate too much of a backlog like the mountain bike world is experiencing right we've pre-ordered all of our mountain bike components okay so you know we're running SRAM Axis top of the line XX1 mm -hmm. so that drivetrain We've all pre-ordered those parts. They're ready to go. Is this a wireless or like an electronic shift shifting? That is the Axis, yeah. Oh, wow. That's the SRAM system. So like any other SRAM wireless, you just plug it, huh. charge it. I don't see a lot of these. You know, it's pretty neat to be up close with it. And it says 500%. Is this 10 to 50 tooth? Correct. Is that yep. 12? Is this like the... Uh, it's a 12-speed Eagle. Eagle. And yeah, we, we got that from SRAM as well. Wow. And we feel that's critical because, you know, the horsepower and the wattage that your arms can put out is reduced mm -hmm. from a bicycle. So it's really critical to have that range and not have to change out chain rings inside the bike. Sure. You're, yeah, because you don't... You, it's like this is your... A lot of e-bikes these days are one by. You know, so yep. having a huge range and then a comfortable cadence option, exactly. 12 of those steps is phenomenal. Exactly. I'm really impressed, man. Is there anything I haven't asked about? I feel like we've gone through this. Um, like we were saying with orders, I think we'll be ready to ship late summer, fall. That's our target. What's the website? Uh, we are bowheadcorp.com. Okay. And how much does something like this weigh? Um, right now we're targeting 60 pounds. So I think 60 to 70 is is a solid estimate. That's ridiculous because a lot of e-bikes, like just regular, they're like in their 55, mm -hmm. especially a full suspension bike. Yeah. I've seen them 60 plus, man. We're trying to be competitive with those, you know, because a lot of our customers came from that background. Uh -huh. We want to give them that experience again. So I have a, I have like a little Prius, you know, that's my car, but I got a quarter inch, inch and a quarter hitch yeah. and you can just get like a utility trailer, pull something like this around if you're going to the trail. You can, we are actually working with a partner to make um, a custom fit trailer that goes right into the hitch. Oh, whoa. Yeah. Wait and a minute. So you could like tow this like from it'll the It'll go like a motorcycle. So it'll be parallel to your bumper. Wow. I think it'll be neat because, you know, a lot of customers want to work on the bike. So that particular rack has a module that comes off the rack, sort of like a motorcycle center stand. Uh huh. So the bow head can be propped up and you can spin it around, do whatever you need. Yep. That is great. What a cool design. And you said it sounds like you've been around since 2018, 2019. Yep. And you've had some other products in the past. Have they all been electric? Yeah, our other offering is the Reach, and that's a throttle powered, uh, not an assist bike. Mm -hmm. So we don't have that here. More like class games. two. This is like class one. Exactly. And with the CX, the cool thing about the class one is that you can go on most mountain biking trails. It's the most like permissible. Accessible. Yeah, accessible. Correct. And then there's, but you know, if you're going backcountry or something and, you know, depending on your, your needs, it's nice that you have a few different options. Oh. Thank you so much for, for talking about this with me. I'm really excited for you guys. Hey to the founders. Sorry I wasn't here, but what a great way to, you know, turn a situation into a blessing for a lot of people. Thank you. Rock Thanks. on, man. Thanks for your time. Oh, yeah. Rad. Nice. Wow. Nice. <laughs> Pretty tight turning radius on this thing. <laughs> Woo. Awesome. Nice. Can you do one more? Oh, <laughs> nice. Oh, yeah. This thing is rowdy. Nice job, man. Thank you.
Oh, no. scripted uh, riding there. <laughs> well, I heard that bash guard on the bottom did yep. its job. Did its job, yeah. That's rad. Yeah, we're intending for, you know, if you were a hardcore mountain biker, you can still have fun, right? Absolutely. I'm getting that sense. Beautiful.